Hello everyone, uh, I'm putting this up here just to show YouTube that I am operating within the guidelines of fair use, um, which allows to use segments of material I do not own the rights for in order to criticize and express an opinion. Uh, you know, just as any democratic uh, free speech supporting platform would do. Uh, I'm not going to make any money out of this, and everything I upload here will be for the sole purpose of reviewing, um, critique, and expressing opinions about uh, what's going on and what went on um, on the... This video is going to be dedicated to uh, the last upload from the Fully family. And I'm going to talk a little bit about um, body language in children and how to interpret it. And also we're gonna talk about the whole experience and what we can see and learn about uh, Raphael and Abby. And the first thing I'm gonna mention is, uh, notice the title of this video. A once in a lifetime experience awaits our epic medieval school trip. Now, um, we're talking about a pattern of using words to describe a situation that, in my opinion, is false. The word school is inserted here into this title to make the viewer, in my opinion, make the viewer feel like we're talking about some kind of organized school uh, event. And while watching you, the video, you will, you will see that that is nothing of the sort. There are no teachers, there are no instructors, there are no class children, there is no system going on at all. Um, the children, Raphael and Abigail, are not communicating with any other children. There, there is no sign of any group or class activity. It has nothing to do with school. The only thing I'm imagining that could have happened is that this uh, very in my opinion, suspicious online school that they are learning with or homeschooling their kids with um, offered some kind of discount to the tickets of this event. Medieval issues are Andrea's favorite. She loves that. She has shown us in a few videos that she loves going to these uh, medieval events. So I don't know. Uh, but anyway, the word school here is not fooling anyone. Just him. That's the butt. So let's talk a bit about body language and spe specifically children's body language uh, when it comes to Raphael. So as you all know, this is not the only time he uh, walks like this and carries himself this way and stands like this. This is repetitive in every video that you see them, um, especially going out. Uh, because funnily enough, when he is at home, he does not walk like this, which means this has to do with the outside. And in this picture, you can even see Abigail holding her hands like that. What does that mean when it comes to children? So if you look at your children's hands, uh, the first thing you need to, to check is um, what is the level of tension in the hand muscles? So you can identify what is really going on in your children's mind through that. So when you see a child clenching their, their fists in such a way, uh, when they are in a certain uh, area or place or under certain conditions, but not all the time, then this means usually that we're talking about a child in distress uh, who is experiencing fear or anxiety and who is feeling threatened. Uh, now, this is not surprising, is it? I mean, this child has been scared out of his wits ever since he was a baby. He was taught to be afraid. And now, secluding the kids in the house, isolating them from society, is starting to bear fruits. When they are outside and in society, it seems, uh, at least for Raphael, that this is a very stressful situation. So in some way, in some warped way, Andrea is getting her wish. 
Because if this goes on and he does not get used to being around people and in society and is not socialized with the world, then in my opinion, my personal opinion, he is in high risk of developing agoraphobia, just like she had when she was younger, and social anxiety, which she still suffers from. And it, it boggles my mind to think that this is intentionally done to a child. And I say intentionally because I've already shown in one of my videos that this is a method. This is her belief. She said so openly. She believes in scaring the children out of doing things. And in this case, the scaring is just by isolating, by keeping them away from society, by preventing them the privilege, the, their right to be part of society, to socialize, to have friends. So let's go back to the body language in children, because this is an interesting topic on its own, but even more interesting when we watch this, I dare say, human experiment that is going on here um, with these poor little kids. Again, my opinion only. So when you look at your kid's hands, uh, have a look at their thumb. So when a, when a child is feeling negative feelings like fear or he is alarmed or stressed, uh, usually it will be as if he tries to hide his thumb. The thumb would be hidden inside uh, the hand the, or the other fingers will cover it. Almost like to protect it. So you can see that in Abigail as well. Another thing that you can see in children is the way they hold their body. So if their body is rigid and with a, with a tense muscle tone, uh, then we're talking ma many times um, about a child who is experiencing fear or anxiety or is in very big distress. Um, and it could be distress from home or social distress. But generally, we see all these things repeating as a, as a repeating pattern in Raphael. So again, I'm not talking about a one-time thing. I'm talking about every time they go out, you see this behavior in Raphael. You see his rigid walk and the way he uh, holds himself up. You see the tense muscle tone. You see the clenched, clenched fists. Um, and he is generally very nervous. And just for the purpose of comparing, this is the way he walks at home. All right, Raphael and I are going to go on a quick. So even here in these uh, three seconds, you can see that the muscle tone is relaxed. Uh, he walks regularly, normally, like a regular child. Uh, because he is in his mind, and this is my interpretation of things, he is in the safe zone. And the safe zone is the trailer. Um and probably the yard around it, and that is just so sad and tragic that a child that age already shows symptoms of such extreme anxiety and feeling fearful and feeling threatened when they go out into society. So as I said uh, in former videos, we're talking about a parent that is extremely overbearing, controlling, uh, there is no air that can be breathed in that house that she does not control. Uh, we also see that her needs come first and foremost to everyone and everything. Um, and that is, again, my opinion, a narcissistic trait that we're seeing. Um, and the children are paying the price.